This is Lewis Art for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store. Delighted to be joined with Ben Shalom here at the Shard. Uh, we've just been treated to a, a very, very nice uh, meal, uh, courtesy of yourself. Cheers for that, mate. I think it was the team, really. Um, but no, good to see you. Start of a big week. Absolutely, start of a massive week. Um, yeah, Callum Simpson, Jack Chelly. Uh, yeah, an interesting dynamic today. I was uh, sitting on the table with uh, Callum, and then obviously Zach's family were on the table as well. So, yeah, an interesting one ahead of an interesting fight uh, on Saturday night. Massive fight, really interesting fight. One that I think a lot of people are backing Zach Chelly to win just because of the experience and, 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 and his learnings and obviously done a huge amount more rounds, huge amount more tests than Callum Simpson, but Callum has the hometown advantage and the win behind him. So, yeah, a great fight for Callum, a really, really tough fight for Zach, a huge opportunity to headline on Sky Sports. Both of them get to put everything on the line and uh, yeah, it's what British Tiles are made for. I think to do a stadium, to sell out, to do it so quickly, I'm really looking forward to it. It, sh it will be a huge night. Is it always an interesting one, especially as a promoter, because you've obviously promoted Chelly and you've promoted Callum, and it was the same, I guess, for Chris Bloom Smith and Richard Riakpour, when you've got the champion almost being the away fighter. Is it always a weird dynamic, do you think? I didn't think about that. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I think that the, the, what I have to say with Zach Chelly, because a lot of people are saying, how can it be Callum Simpson headlining in Barnsley? But let's be honest, the reason why this is headlining on Sky Sports is because of his phenomenal support and the spectacle that's going to be there on Saturday night and the cra and the following that he's created. And Zach recognises that as well. This is his opportunity to headline on Sky. So they're both, it's a win-win. Sometimes it works out like that. And uh, Callum's done a lot to build his support in Barnsley. It reminds me of Bournemouth, where when we first went, the, the bars know, the, the barbers know, the, the local shopkeepers know, and it's just taken over the town. And uh, it's a huge opportunity, but I think both guys have a huge opportunity. And this isn't a Callum Simpson procession. It might feel like that on fight week, but Zach Chelly, I think, will go in as a favourite. I'm not sure. I, I'm not checked the odds, but I know a lot of people fancy that. And uh, Callum's going to have to show what we believe he is and, and show what he does, does in the gym. Another good undercard as well. Um, obviously, good fights such as Stephen Kenner against Joe Laws. Um, yeah, obviously, recapping of, of the undercard, one guy I did particularly take uh, attention to is obviously Joel Kadua. Um, it's clear who he's managed by Tunde Ajayi as well as Anthony Yard. Um, I think when people did see the announcement of him sign, uh, uh, he announced that he signed a deal with Boxer as well. Anything to, more to look at, uh, and when it comes to I guess a relationship with Tunde and, and who else he manages? Not yet, but I think just on that, Bawatsi Yard was the fight that we wanted to make since February. Since as soon as Josh Bawatsi stepped out of that ring on February the third, I believe Anthony Yard fought the week after. We did. And we June fifteenth at Sellers Park was the fight that that we really wanted to make and because of the contractual things at the time it just wasn't worth it but it's still the fight that Josh wants he couldn't give up the interim title opportunity it's a huge fight so we can't look beyond Willie Hutchinson but if you think about where Biv or Better be ever at and what might happen and is there going to be a rematch and I know there's talk of is there talk of Opatia? Yeah, the, yeah there, was, there was loose talk of Opatia yeah but you just don't, you can't rely on it. Them, them coming, them, the Bivol, Bivol, so Even though we might be, Josh might be the interim champion after September the 21st, God willing, obviously, he has to win the fight. The Anthony Arnstein fight is still the huge fight, and it's still the fight that we would like to make. Could do is nothing, not tied into anything, but it's a fight that I think Bawatsi, um is the fight that he's always wanted, and it's the fight that he was upset if I'm honest with me for, for, for not delivering in June so um, it's something that we'll be looking to make if and it's a big if um, he wins on September the 21st Absolutely for sure did want to stick on because it's been, it's been a while since I spoke to you um, and there was big news that came out uh, Chris Eubank Jr signing a partnership deal with Boxer um, yeah not a promotional deal a partnership deal so how does it essentially work? I think a lot has been read into that it's the same thing. We're doing uh, some commercial sponsorship stuff. We've got obligations around his brand on the events that he's headlining and things like that and, and, and being involved in the event, but there's nothing more to it than that. 
So I guess when it comes to promoting Eubank, um, the Canelo fight hasn't materialised. Um, there was also rumours of a, a Shiraz fight not materialising for that Wembley card. Um, I think when you look at a public opinion, a lot of people would question what Eubank is doing in his career, where he's going in his career. Um, so I guess if you are his promoter, really what is the aim when, when there's two big fights there for him that, that he hasn't fulfilled? Um, look, we weren't involved in the sh during the Shiraz stuff. The Canelo stuff, there was an offer. It was coming very quick. Obviously, what are we now? End of July, fight on September the 14th. The numbers and the value of the fight, or what they could, what they would, it was just too far apart, um, even for a fight like that. And I think there's an acceptance from both parties that that fight should happen and will happen. Um, and so, didn't get further than that. Yeah, it's frustrating. He's been out of the ring for a year. Obviously, I think we only announced his signature a week or two ago, week maybe, but not long. So we've got to get to work now and get him in the ring and, 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 and win, world, win a world title, which is, which is ultimately what he needs to do. He's a good fighter, a very, very good fighter, and a fighter that's more than capable of winning a world title. And I think he feels fresh, I think he feels good, I think he's coming off a fantastic win. But he has been out of the ring for, for a year and he, and he needs to get back and so I understand those question marks and he needs to get in the big fights now and, and, and that will be our job going forward. So the idea is a, is a few more warm-up fights first, you say? <laughs> no, I've yeah, seen Yeah, because yeah, that's what people are saying, yeah. Who's saying that? Uh, just like, you know, I don't know. People not attached to boxer, but yeah, that's what people are saying. That there's a few warm-up fights. That's 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 what Eubank wants. Eubank you, you wanted. That's what. It's just people make claims. Certain people will get onto it, but those are the claims that Eubank wants warm-up fights. That's why he signed with Sky. Is what people claim. I'm not. I don't. I can't even be bothered with the with the back and forth anymore. So I, I think a lot of promoters really wanted to sign Chris. Really wanted to sign him, and did absolutely everything they could. And so, I think just, you just got to take it with a pinch of salt. And, and like, I've, I've not heard that, well, that's, uh, and that's it. So I think what sort of the, the alluding to is um, is obviously comments that Frank Smith would have made, especially he made other comments this morning on the stomping ground in an interview. Um, he said that a boxer were uh, desperate to deliver because you because for the past three years you haven't delivered for Sky, um, and that's why sort of the, the Eubank Junior signing was made. So um, yeah, sort of a bit of a reaction to that. I thought we were friends now. I thought well, we were all good. No, I think since the Eubank signing, you know, people can probably connect the dots, but he's, he seems to have uh, riled him up, and he's saying a lot of things around this signing. Well, I've not even spoken about it yet. So look. Again, nothing from what I've heard and I have to take it with a pinch of salt and yeah, hopefully uh, he can get over it and, and, and we can move on. Definitely. Um, one situation I wanted to bring up and I sort of wanted to address with you, Ben. Um, uh, at the When his fight got announced for the Wembley card against Josh Kelly, Liam Smith made numerous comments uh, about yourself and your relationship breaking down. Um, and he sort of alluded that after the, the Eubank rematch, um, you didn't really want to know with him and, and you weren't sort of really interested in pursuing a relationship with him, um, like a, obviously like a friendship. Um, yeah, and, he, and then he done interviews this weekend as well where he further sort of doubled down on the comments of, of, of the relationship between him and yourself. Um, I suppose from your point of view, seeing those comments, um, what can you really say on, on the situation? Yeah, obviously um, was just disappointing to see it, but Liam's entitled to his opinion. I thought we did headline a show in Liverpool and we did two big pay-per-view events and uh, look, I have a lot of respect for, for him as a fighter and a lot of respect for him, uh, his family as well. And so, yeah, I think uh, that's it. And uh, to be honest, I wish him all the luck in the world with the, with the Josh Kelly fight, and I think it's a great fight. And I think after the second fight, there just wasn't, there was we couldn't deliver what perhaps he, he wanted. Um, and sometimes th that can be a whole host of reasons. But as I say, um, a lot of respect for, for him and his family. Yeah, so, so, so I guess on the situation of yourself where he said that you weren't really weren't really interested in talking to him after the, the rematch, like sort of, I guess, is that more of the truth, would you say? Or? No, look, as I said, I don't see it that way. We did meet after it. Um, but, you know, I can't blame him for how he feels. You know, that's maybe something I need to think about as well. But as I say, it was it, it is disappointing because I do have a lot of respect for him, and and, and, and we did try and deliver everything that um, we did, and I think we did deliver um, three very good fights. But 
Um, as I say, a lot of respect for him, and I actually do hope that he, he rolls back the years against uh, against Josh Kelly on, on September 21st. Joy Opataya um, was on the zone. He made comments towards uh, your champion, Chris Brim Smith. Said that there's a million dollar offer for himself, for him. Um, he's he said he's willing to take 250 grand um, from his purse. Um, and he said the only reason if they don't take this fight now is because they're ducking, and uh, sort of made numerous comments about that. Um, yeah, I guess it, is, the, is the million dollar offer true? Listen, I think he's going to have to. Uh, Chris Bill and Smith's the only one that sells in that division, sells stadiums. So I don't know what they think he's used to earning, but a million dollars isn't miles away. So for a fight like that, it's a, it's a huge fight. And I know from, from speaking to Chris, it's a fight that they're happy to do. Um, I think he's away at the moment. Um, he's in the US taking some time off, some much needed time off. And he, he's been through some gruelling wars in the past 12 months. But that is definitely a fight he wants to unify. And, and, and that's a fight I think can happen towards the end of the year, but it's going to have to be a lot more than a, the mil million dollars for Chris. Yes, yeah, Shane McGregor went on the toe-to-toe -to -toe and he said that there was advance talks for both Zerdo and CBA, and uh, sorry, Zerdo and Jai Opataya. Um, Chris has been pretty open about, pretty honest about the, the idea of going to, to America and Zerdo um, and fighting Zerdo. There were DMs exchanged between the two saying, you know, I'll see you next. Um, so is it necessarily Zerdo could be the preferred option over Opataya? Uh, look, his dream has been to fight in Las Vegas. So if that is a possibility, then of course that's one that we'll take really seriously. Um, but ultimately, um, the right offer's there, and, and it will be up to Chris and, and, and his team to, to take what one's there. We've been on an unbelievable journey with him. It's been phenomenal to have got him to this position. For me, he's the number one. That, that is the biggest fight, that Chris Bill and Smith Jai Opataya fight in the division. No doubt about that. Um, but he'll make the right decision based on the offers that we receive. And yes, both of them, conversations have started, negotiations have started. And uh, yeah, it's just phenomenal. Like we picked him up around European level, although maybe 18, two, year, two years ago now, he headlined against Isaac Chamberlain. To have gone on to what he's achieved, win the world title in front of the stadium, defended twice now, and about to head into a unification. Exciting times. And hopefully um, we get one of them over the line very soon. Last one from myself. Um, I did want to talk about a broadcasting situation. I guess obviously it involves yourself, but almost this time next year in the UK, I mean, it's pretty pretty clear that the Sky contract is uh, approaching its final year. Um, but that isn't just for yourself. Obviously, Frank has uh, been rumoured to be on his final year at TNT, potentially going to the zone. Um, I think Wasserman have got a final year left on, on their Channel 5 deal. Uh, Top Rank have got a final year left on their ESPN deal. Um, creates an interesting, you're involved in that, but creates an interesting landscape for boxing when it comes to major broadcasters this time summer 25 look it does and look it's a great time for boxing in general with his excellency and saudi getting involved the fights that we're able to see the joining up of promoters the joining up of broadcasters it's incredible so it is a different time i think for us the power of sky to to build stars to put on the british nights you think of even the nights that we've had this year for me is phenomenally important to the sport, especially in this country. And so DAZN are doing amazing things, but we want to see some of the established TV networks as well in the sport. And we've seen a couple of them go in the US, um, but Sky have been a long supporter of, of boxing and uh, there's someone that I'm extremely uh, loyal and thankful to and, uh, and, and want to deliver as much as I possibly can for. So I think it can work the best of both worlds. I really think what we're seeing now is how the networks and how the promoters can work together and, and the sport is growing because of it. So I expect that to continue. And obviously there's a lot of moving parts, but what is clear is that the Saudis and His Excellency don't actually care about the politics. They don't care about the promoters getting in the way. And I think they're going to take a view of how do we make this sport the biggest it can possibly be? And I think that involves a number of networks, um, not just one. Absolutely. Ben, as always, thank you for today. And uh, yeah, thanks for the time, mate. Always a pleasure. And uh, yeah, top man. Take care, mate. Cheers. Enjoy Barnsley.